Perhaps it's because movies are so massively expensive to make. Perhaps it's because graphic novels, TV shows, video games, books, and the like are such rich sources of material. Or perhaps it's because audiences just prefer the familiar. Whatever the reason, most box office hits rely heavily on existing material. Of the 10 highest grossing films per year from the last 10 years, 74 out of 100 are either sequels or remakes of earlier films or adaptations of comic books, video games, books, and so on. Transforming the old into the new is Hollywood's greatest talent. At this point, we've got three sequels to a film adapted from a theme park attraction. We've got a movie musical based on a musical which was based on a movie. We've got two sequels to a film that was adapted from an animated TV show based on a line of toys. We've got a movie based on two books, one of which was based on a blog, which was inspired by the other book that was adapted into the film. Julie and Julia. Do you follow? We've got 11 Star Trek films, 12 Friday the 13th, and 23 James Bonds. We've got stories that have been told, retold, transformed, referenced, and subverted since the dawn of cinema. We've seen vampires morph from hideous monsters to caped bedroom invaders to campy jokes to sexy hunks to sexier hunks. Of the few box office hits that aren't sequels, remakes, or adaptations, the word original wouldn't spring to mind to describe them. These are genre movies, and they stick to pretty standard templates. Genres then break up into sub-genres with their own, even more specific conventions. So within the category of horror films, we have sub-genres like slasher, zombie, creature feature, and of course, torture porn. All have standard elements that are appropriated, transformed, and subverted. Let's use the biggest film of the decade as an example. Now it's not a sequel, remake, or adaptation, but it is a genre film, sci-fi, and most tellingly, it's a member of a tiny sub-genre where sympathetic white people feel bad about all the murder, pillaging, and annihilation being done on their behalf. I call this sub-genre, Sorry About Colonialism, I'm talking about movies like Dances with Wolves, The Last Samurai, The Last of the Mohicans, Dune, Lawrence of Arabia, A Man Called Horse, and even Fern Gully and Pocahontas. Films are built on other films, as well as on books, TV shows, actual events, plays, whatever. This applies to everything from the lowliest genre film right on up to revered indie fare. And it even applies to massively influential blockbusters, the kinds of films that reshape pop culture. Which brings us to... Even now, Star Wars endures as a work of impressive imagination, but many of its individual components are as recognizable as the samples in a remix. The foundation for Star Wars comes from Joseph Campbell. He popularized the structures of myth in his book, The Hero with a Thousand Faces. Star Wars follows the outline of the monomyth, which consists of stages like the call to adventure, supernatural aid, the belly of the whale, the road of trials, the meeting with the goddess, and a bunch more. Also huge influences were the Flash Gordon serials from the 30s and Japanese director Akira Kurosawa. Star Wars plays much like an updated version of Flash Gordon, right down to the soft wipes and the opening titles design. From Kurosawa, we get Masters of Spiritual Martial Arts, a low-ranking bickering duo, more soft wipes, a Beneath the Floorboards hideaway, and a boastful baddie getting his arm chopped off. You just watch yourself. We're wanted men. I have the death sentence on 12, system. <laughs> War films and westerns were also huge sources for Star Wars. The scene where Luke discovers his slaughtered family resembles this scene from The Searchers. And the scene where Han Solo shoots Greedo resembles this scene from The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. 
The climactic airstrikes in the Dam Busters, 633 Squadron, and the bridges at Toko Ri play very similarly to the run in the Death Star, and in many cases existing shots were even used as templates for Star Wars special effects. There's also many other elements clearly derived from various films. We have a tin man like the tin woman in Metropolis, a couple shots inspired by 2001, a grab the girl and swing scene like this one in The Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, a holographic projection kind of like the one in Forbidden Planet, a rally resembling this one in Triumph of the Will, and cute little robots much like those in Silent Running. George Lucas collected materials, he combined them, he transformed them. Without the films that preceded it, there could be no Star Wars. Creation requires influence. Everything we make is a remix of existing creations, our lives, and the lives of others. As Isaac Newton once said, we stand on the shoulders of giants, which is what he was doing when he adapted that saying from Bernard de Chartres. In part three, we'll further explore this idea and chart the blurry boundary between the original and the unoriginal. George Lucas was the most movie-saturated filmmaker of his era, but that baton has since been passed to Quentin Tarantino's remix master thesis is Kill Bill, which is probably the closest thing Hollywood has to a mashup. Packed with elements pulled from countless films, Kill Bill raises filmic sampling to new heights of sophistication. The killer nurse scene in particular is almost entirely a recombination of elements from existing films. The basic action is the same as this scene from Black Sunday, where a woman disguised as a nurse attempts to murder a patient with a syringe of red fluid. Daryl Hannah's eye patch is a nod to the lead character in They Call Her One Eye, and the tune she's whistling is taken from the 1968 thriller Twisted Nerve. Capping it off, the split screen effect is modeled on techniques used by Brian De Palma in an assortment of films, including Carrie. <laughs> For an extended look at Kill Bill's references, check this out. Hi there, I'm Kirby. I am the creator of Everything is a Remix, and I hope you enjoyed this latest installment. Now, if you did, if you enjoyed it a lot, and you'd like to help me keep slugging away at it, financial contributions are very much welcome, and you can do that at the address that's over there someplace, or just go to my site and click Donate. This series really is a massive amount of work, so all contributions really do help. Also go to everythingisaremix.info if you'd like to learn more about the production of this video, the samples, the references, all the stuff that went into the making of it. Thank you for watching. Uh, my sincere thanks for your support, your feedback, your praise, your criticism, the lot. Thank you. I hope you like the video. I hope you like the next one. And I'll see you next time.